Hello, my name is Jude Reintjes. I work as a neurologist and clinical neurophysiologist in the Radboud Medical Center in Nijmegen, the Netherlands. Nance van Alva just discussed the ultrasound anatomy of the upper extremity. And in this presentation, I will continue to discuss the ultrasound anatomy of the lower limb muscles. We will discuss the rectus femoris, fastus lateralis, tibial anterior, and the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. And we will try to do that all in the same way. So we will review on anatomy, patient positioning, and demonstration of um, the measurement. As you might well notice, the instruction videos I will show all share the same format. And this might sound a bit monotonous. Um, the reason for that is that the videos I will show are all individually available at the new website of the task force Neuromuscular Ultrasound of the Dutch Society of Clinical Neurophysiology. So if you really want to get started yourself, you can find these instructions for each muscle separately on our website. And let me just show you where you can find it. If you visit www.neuromuscularultrasound.org, you can select English on the bottom left. More and more sections will be available in both Dutch and English. The muscle ultrasound section can be found under education. And if you scroll down here, you will find an overview of all the available scan protocols for the, for the muscles available. So please feel welcome to visit our website and find out. Let's start with the first instruction video of the rectus femoris muscle. This is the protocol for scanning the rectus femoris muscle. Here are the scan requirements. The subject is in a supine position with the limbs relaxed. To standardize the measurement, we scan the muscle at the side of its maximum bulk. For the rectus femoris, this is halfway between the iliac spine and the upper edge of the patella. This position is marked on the skin. The transducer is placed over the muscle in a transverse direction with the left side of the probe aligned to the left side of the ultrasound screen. You can now see the probe position with the corresponding ultrasound image shown on the right. Please make sure that the probe has a strict 90 degree angle to the underlying bone or fascia. You can gauge this by assessing the overall muscle image brightness. The optimal image is where the underlying surface is most bright. The image is then frozen and the corresponding annotation is added to the image. The image is saved and stored for further offline analysis. The probe is taken off the muscle and put on again two times to capture a total of three independent images. The third image is also used for the muscle thickness measurement using the electronic diameter calipers on your ultrasound device. After placing the calipers, the image is stored again. You have now captured the ultrasound image of the rectus femoris muscle for offline visual grading and quantitative grayscale assessment. Okay, well, let's continue um, with two case examples. On the left side, we see uh, a muscle ultrasound image of the rectus femoris in a 47 year old male. And on the right side, we see a muscle ultrasound image of the rectus femoris muscle in a ten, uh, 25 year old female. The muscle on the left has a rather normal visual appearance, I would say. Um, uh, whether the muscle shown on the right uh, has a quite abnormal appearance with high echogenicity and loss of normal muscle architecture. And both patients actually are known with fasciocapillo humeral dystrophy. And uh, these cases illustrate the high variability in muscle involvement in this specific disease. Let's continue with the next instruction video. This is the protocol for scanning the fastest lateralis muscle. Here are the scan requirements. The subject is in a supine position with the limbs relaxed. To standardize the measurement, we scan the muscle at the side of its maximum bulk. For the fastest lateralis muscle, 
This is at two thirds from the iliac spine to the cranial edge of the patella. This position is marked on the skin. The transducer is placed over the muscle in a transverse direction with the left side of the probe aligned to the left side of the ultrasound screen. You can now see the probe position with the corresponding ultrasound image shown on the right. Please make sure that the probe has a strict 90 degree angle to the underlying bone or fascia. You can gauge this by assessing the overall muscle image brightness. The optimal image is where the underlying surface is most bright. The image is then frozen and the corresponding annotation is added to the image. The image is saved and stored for further offline analysis. The probe is taken off the muscle and put on again two times to capture a total of three independent images. The third image is also used for the muscle thickness measurement using the electronic diameter calipers on your ultrasound device. After placing the calipers, the image is stored again. You have now captured the ultrasound image of the fastest lateralis muscle for offline visual grading and quantitative grayscale assessment. Well, let's go to another uh, case example. Here we see an ultrasound image of the fastest lateralis muscle of a 53 year old patient. He is known with dermatomyositis, and for this indication, he uses corticosteroids since 2010. He experienced increased pain in his legs, and we see high echo, echo intensity of the muscle, shown here, with also loss of normal muscle structure. And we see also some calcifications, shown here. And both these findings are expected in a patient known with dermatomyositis. But we also see a rather hypoechogenic layer, uh, which seems to lie between fascia and muscle. And um, well, the diagnosis is already given, but <laughs> um, a full thickness biopsy in this patient, uh, including this hypoechogenic layer, refilled, uh, uh, refilled the disseminated mycobacterium avium infection, most likely triggered by the immune suppression. So quite an impressive case. Let's continue to the tibial anterior muscle. This is the protocol for scanning the tibialis anterior muscle. Here are the scan requirements. The subject is in a supine position with the limbs relaxed. To standardize the measurement, we scan the muscle at the side of its maximum bulk. For the tibialis anterior muscle, this is at one third from the lower edge of the patella to the lateral malleolus. This position is marked on the skin. Transducer is placed over the muscle in a transverse direction with the left side of the probe aligned to the left side of the ultrasound screen. You can now see the probe position with the corresponding ultrasound image shown on the right. Please make sure that the probe has a strict 90 degree angle to the underlying bone or fascia. You can gauge this by assessing the overall muscle image brightness. The optimal image is where the underlying surface is most bright. The image is then frozen and the corresponding annotation is added to the image. The image is saved and stored for further offline analysis. The probe is taken off the muscle and put on again two times to capture a total of three independent images. The third image is also used for the muscle thickness measurement using the electronic diameter calipers on your ultrasound device. After placing the calipers, the image is stored again. You have now captured the ultrasound image of the tibialis anterior muscle for offline visual grading and quantitative grayscale assessment. Okay, another case. Uh, here we see an ultrasound image of the right tibial anterior muscle of a 42 year old female. And she is known with progressive atrophy and weakness of the right lower leg. And in addition, she also reported some skin changes. So what do we see on this ultrasound image? 
um, we see that the uh, muscle is uh, rather uh, hyperechoic, but, but there seem to be rather focal areas of it. So um, these focal areas also have loss of the normal muscle uh, architecture. And these findings are actually consistent with a long-standing myositis. And this was also uh, the final diagnosis in this patient at the end. So let's continue with our last muscle, uh, which we will review, and that's the medial head of the gastrocnemius. This is the protocol for scanning the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. Here are the scan requirements. The subject is in a supine position with the limbs relaxed and rotated outward. To standardize the measurement, we scan the muscle at the side of its maximum bulk. For the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle, this is at one third from the knee cavity to the medial malleolus. This position is marked on the skin. The is placed over the muscle in a transverse direction, with the left side of the probe aligned to the left side of the ultrasound screen. You can now see the probe position with the corresponding ultrasound image shown on the right. Please make sure that the probe has a strict 90 degree angle to the underlying bone or fascia. You can gauge this by assessing the overall muscle image brightness. The optimal image is where the underlying surface is most bright. The image is then frozen and the corresponding annotation is added to the image. The image is saved and stored for further offline analysis. The probe is taken off the muscle and put on again two times to capture a total of three independent images. The third image is also used for the muscle thickness measurement using the electronic diameter calipers on your ultrasound device. After placing the calipers, the image is stored again. You have now captured the ultrasound image of the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle for offline visual grading and quantitative grayscale assessment. Let's finish with a case. Uh, this is a 50 year, 51 year old female, and she is known with breast cancer uh, and polyneuropathy induced by chemotera uh, uh, chemotherapy she uh, received. And her main complaint uh, are muscle cramps. And on the right side, we see a dynamic, a dynamic image of the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. But what do we see? And some of you might think of the last case of Nance van Alphen. We see a rather hyper echoic muscle with also a so called moth eaten aspect. And if we look more careful, we can see that the subcutaneous layer is frozen. That's not moving at all. But the underlying movement, uh, the underlying muscle is moving. And the twitches you see in the muscle itself, so over there and over there, these again represent fasciculations. And you even see some more high frequent small muscle movements in the lower corner on the left. And those actually represent fibrillations in the underlying soleus muscle. And if you have a high enough frame rate uh, from your probe, you can even record these kind of muscle movements. And this was the last case. So I want to thank you. Um, I just discussed the ultrasound anatomy of the lower limb muscles. And um, thanks for your attention and enjoy the rest of the conference.